Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the trigonometric functions, and we're going to start with the sine function, the sine of theta. Sometimes you'll even see the sine of x or the sine of y and so forth, but theta is like the common unit that we use for angles, so we'll just call it the sine of theta, and that's how we write it, S-I-N with the angle symbol behind it. So what does that mean? What is the sine of theta? Again, it relates to the unit circle. Here's the unit circle. Here we can see that the rate is equal to 1. The equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This is the y value, this is the x value of the point right there, x, y. And we remember that there's some sort of relationship between the distance traveled along the circle to that point, the angle, the value for y, and the value for x. And the trigonometric function sine of x, or sine of theta in this case, kind of puts it all together. Now before we show you what the sine of theta is defined as, let's go back and take this triangle right here and redraw it right there. Here's the angle theta, there's the adjacent side, there's the x side, the y side, the hypotenuse, and so let's call this the hypotenuse, and yes indeed, I call this the adjacent side. That means that this is the side adjacent to the angle. It touches the angle and it's not the hypotenuse. Notice that both the hypotenuse and the adjacent side define kind of what the angle is. And then here's the opposite side to the angle. Notice that the opposite side is not touching the angle. It's opposite to where the angle is at. So that's how we define the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. And of course we know that the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And since in this case the hypotenuse is equal to 1, we know that the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared equals to 1, and therefore we can say that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Again, notice the relationship. Now the definition of the sine of the angle. The sine of the angle is a function which is defined by a ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. All right, now notice the hypothesis, the opposite side was not equal to the y value of the point along the unit circle, so we could say, well, that's equal to y divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1, which is simply equal to y. So really, on the unit circle, the sine of theta is equal to the length of y or the, the magnitude of y, the value of the point that the hypotenuse touches on the unit circle when we have a particular angle. Now notice that if the angle gets bigger, y gets bigger. If the angle gets smaller, y gets smaller. If the angle is 0 degrees, then y is 0. If the angle is 90 degrees, then y is equal to 1. And so the y value will be, will be between 0 and 1 as the angle changes from 0 to 90 degrees or from 0 to pi over 2 if we want to express the angle in terms of radians. So now you can see that the sine of theta is simply a relationship between the angle and the opposite side. Really, that's what it comes down to. As long as we use a unit circle and the hypotenuse is equal to 1. If the hypotenuse is not equal to 1, then we just have to scale it. But that's okay. For now, we'll just call the hypotenuse 1. And so you can see that the sine of theta simply equal, is equal to the y value of the point on the unit circle, which represents the height from the x-axis to where the hypotenuse touches the unit circle. So let's use some angles. So for the sine of 0 degrees, which is equal to the sine of 0 radians, which is equal to, well that's the y value of the points, that would be this point right there, and of course the y value there is 0. How about the sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to the sine of pi over 6 radians, what is that equal to? What is the value of y when the angle is 30 degrees? Let's see if we remember that. Okay, let's go back to our unit circle here. So there's our unit circle, and we're in the first quadrant, and so we remember that the x, y value there was 1, 0. Over here, the x, the, uh, x value was 0 and the y value was 1. For a 30 degree angle, if this was 30 degrees, then we know that the xy value was the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. For a 45 degree angle, 45 degrees, we know that the uh, x and y were the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. And finally, for a 60 degree angle, 60 degrees, we knew that this was equal to uh, 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. Notice that these are the y values. 
And those are the numbers we get when we take the sine of those particular angles. So the sine of 30 degrees means that the y value was 1 half. For the sine of 45 degrees, which is equal to the sine of pi over 4 radians, notice that 45 degrees, the y value is the square root of 2 over 2. For the sine of 60 degrees, that's equal to the sine of 60 degrees would be uh, pi thirds, which is equal to um, uh, the square root of 3 over 2. And finally, the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to the sine of pi over 2, which is equal to 1. So that's how we define the function for the sine of the angle, sine of theta. It's equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse is equal to 1, it's equal to the opposite side to 1. Or the opposite side can also be defined as the y value of the point on the unit circle. So it's equal to y. And then we can see that as the angle changes, the sine of the angle changes accordingly. It simply gives you the y value for those particular angles. Again, the y value of the point on the circle that the hypotenuse points to for those particular angles. The greater the angle, the greater the value of y. The smaller the angle, the smaller the value of y. So therefore, the sine of small numbers are, are close to zero. The, the sine of big numbers up to 90 degrees go all the way up to one and so forth. Now what happens when you continue going past? Notice if you go past, the value for y will become smaller again. Notice how the value of y becomes smaller and smaller as the angle continues to go around. Like so. So eventually, you can see that for an angle of 180 degrees, the sine of 180 degrees is equal to, well, that would be the sine of pi, which is equal to, you go 180 degrees, and the y value is again back to 0. So then you go back down to square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, back to 0, as you go from 90 degrees all the way to 180 degrees. So let's do that. So let's take the sine of 90 plus 30, or 120 degrees, which is equal to the sine of, that would be, let's see, that would be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2 thirds pi, 2 thirds pi, which is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. If we now take the sine of 135 degrees, which is 90 plus 45, which is the sine of 3 quarters pi, which is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. If we now take the sine of, let's see, 90 plus 60 or 150 degrees, that's equal to the sine of, uh, let's see here, that would be 5 sixth pi, which is equal to 1 half. And finally, the sine of 180 degrees, which is equal to the sine of pi, which is equal to 0. Now let me make sure I got this correct. So we have uh, uh, 2 thirds pi, that would be 2 thirds, 120, 2 thirds, 180, 3 quarters, 5 sixths, and I got that one right. Okay, very good. Uh, so you can see that simply that represents the y value as the angle changes. Now when we go from 180 all the way to 360 degrees, notice that the y value will be negative, so the sine of an angle between 180 and 360 will give you indeed negative values, but we'll show that at a later video. Right now I just want to make sure that you understood the definition of the sine of the angle. It's that ratio. It simply gives you the y value of a point along the unit circle and it changes as the angle changes. The y value first increases, then it decreases, then it goes negative, and then, it, and then the angle continues like this. The angle, the value for y continues to decrease and goes back to zero. So as you go all the way around the circle, you can see that the y value over here, the y value is that way. If you continue going this way, then you can see the y value is negative. If you continue going this way, you can see the y value is still negative, and eventually you go back to zero and all the way around. If you understand that, that's great because later on we'll actually we'll graph that and it'll make a lot more sense to you. But now, hopefully, you understand what we mean by the sine of the angle, and there's other trigonometric functions which we'll show you in the next several videos.